हेलो आई एम हरमिंदर सिंह एंड आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस अ वेरी सिंपल टॉपिक नेम्ड मेजर ऑफ सेंट्रल टेडेंसी इट इज़ अ वेरी बेसिक टॉपिक दैट इज एक्सटेंसिवली यूज इन द फील्ड ऑफ रिसर्च एज वेल एज इन अवर डे टू डे लाइफ बिफोर स्टार्टिंग दिस वीडियो लेक्चर आई सजेस्ट यू टू वॉच दिस वीडियो टिल एंड सो दैट यू कैन ईजिली अंडरस्टैंड द कॉन्सेप्ट रिलेटेड टू सेंट्रल टेडेंसी in this video lecture we will also discuss various methods that can be used to measure the central tendency of a given sample or a given set of data if you find the content of this video lecture useful then share this video and do subscribe to my channel for future updates for starting this topic let us recall that what is analysis of data we know that to carry out even a basic research the researcher needs to perform numerous number of tasks for the sake of simplicity these tasks are grouped into various phases among the various phases of research process there is a data collection phase in this phase the researcher carry out surveys or perform some kind of experiments to collect huge amount of data that is relevant to his research work now to draw some meaningful conclusions from this huge amount of data the data needs to be processed in a particular way this process is known as analysis of data there are various statistical measures available that can be used to analyze data as per the researcher's need so some of the important statistical measures are measures of central tendency so if the researcher wants to find out one single value that can represent the whole population then the researcher needs to measure the central tendency of data if the researcher wants to know that to which extent the data is scattered then he needs to measure the dispersion of data similarly measure of asymmetry means does the data follow any kind of symmetry or not measure of relationship refers to measurement of effect of one variable on another variable so in this video lecture we will focus on measure of central tendency all other methods of data analysis will be explained in the further videos now the definition says that measure of central tendency tell us the point about which data items have a tendency to cluster this means that to measure the central tendency of a sample data we have to find out a single value such that all the data items of the sample tends to group around that value this value will be considered as the most representative figure for the entire entire data measure of central tendency is also known as statistical average so let us take an example consider that we have collected the marks obtained by 10 students in a subject that is student 1 obtained 70 marks student 2 obtained 80 marks third student obtained 90 marks fourth student obtained 65 marks and so on now the measure of central tendency can give us one single value that can act as a representative for the whole population after applying some methods the measure of central tendency comes out to be 73 after applying some different method the measure of central tendency comes out to be 65 now this 73 means that on an average every student or all the students obtained 
73 marks in that subject so now that in that means 73 now represents the whole population let us take one more example the given table contains the sample of amount spent by person a in a week that is on day first he spent rupees 300 on second day he spent rupees 400 on third day he spent rupees 450 and so on after applying the methods of measure of central tendency one representative value comes out to be rupees 400 after applying some an other method of central tendency the representative value comes out to be 450 now we will learn what are the various methods of measure of central tendency that are available to us and how to apply those methods There are three basic methods used for measure of central tendency. These are mean, also known as arithmetic mean, median, and mode. In addition to these three methods, there is one more method that is also commonly used, and that method is geometric mean. The arithmetic mean or mean may be defined as the value. that we get by dividing the total of the values of various given items in a series by the total number of values in the series this means that if we want to find out the mean of any given series then just add all the data items in that series and divide it by number of items in that series in this way we can find out the mean of any given series the mean of any series is denoted by x bar let's revisit the previous examples in the first example we are given a list of marks obtained by 10 students in a subject as shown in this curly braces now if we want to find out the mean of this series we will add all the term of this series and divide it by total number of terms in this series for example if we add all the terms the total turns out to be 730 now because there are 10 terms in this series so we will divide this total by 10 and using this method the mean turns out to be 73 hence mean of the series or average of the series or representative value of the series turns out to be 73 now let us take a second example in the second example we are given a table which shows the amount of money spent by person a in a week now if we want to find the average amount of money that person a spends in a week we will have to find the mean of this series so the method is same we will add all the terms of this series and divide it divide it by total number of terms so when we add all these terms the total turns out to be 2800 because there are only seven terms in this series so we will divide it divide this total by 7 and the result turns out to be 400 hence we can say the mean of this series is rupees 400 or we can say on an average person a spends rupees 400 every day so by using this method we can find the mean of any sequence we will discuss one more method of calculating the arithmetic mean if the data is given in the form of frequency distribution so to understand exactly what is frequency distribution let us take an example john went up and down the street to find out how many parking spaces each house has here are his results so according to the results of john there are 20 houses that contains only one parking space there are 25 houses that contains two parking space 
फिफ्टीन हाउसेज कंटेन थ्री पार्किंग स्पेसिस एट हाउसेज कंटेन फोर पार्किंग स्पेसिस एंड देयर आर ओनली टू हाउसेज दैट कंटेन फाइव पार्किंग स्पेसिस सो इन टोटल जॉन इन्वेस्टिगेटेड सेवेंटी हाउसेज सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल नोट दैट आई हैव डिनोटेड द नंबर ऑफ पार्किंग स्पेसिस विद एक्स एंड नंबर ऑफ हाउसेज विद एफ नाउ टू फाइंड द अर्थमेटिक मीन द फर्स्ट स्टेप इज वी मल्टीप्लाई दिस टू टर्म्स वी मल्टीप्लाई एक्स विद एफ इन ऑल दिस टर्म्स After multiplying, the results comes comes out to be this. For example, if twenty is multiplied by one, answer is twenty. Twenty-five multiplied by two, answer fifty. Fifteen multiplied by three, answer forty-five. Eight multiplied by four, answer is thirty-two. And two multiplied by five, answer is ten. Now, after multiplying f and x, what we will do? We will add all these terms. After addition. the total comes out to be 157 now if we want to find out the arithmetic mean of this frequency distribution we will divide this total by number of house investigated or the total sum of frequencies that is 70 in this example so the formula becomes this so when we add when or when we divide 157 by 70 the results comes out to be 2.24 this means that on an average every house has 2.24 parking slots let's discuss one another variation of calculating the arithmetic mean this method applies in those questions where the data is given in the form of classes so let us take an example so in this example we are given five classes and corresponding to each class there is a frequency so if we want to find out the arithmetic mean of this data the first step that we has to we have to follow is to find the midpoint of each class now how to find the midpoint of each class we add these two terms and divide it divide it by 2 and then we will get the midpoint of this class similarly add these extreme point extreme points and divide it divide it by 2 and we will get the midpoint of this class and so on so after finding the midpoint of each class what we will have to do we will denote the midpoint by m we have frequency that is denoted by f so the next step after calculating the midpoint of each class the next step is we multiply the frequency with the midpoint of each class so sorry with the midpoint of the corresponding class so after applying the multiplication operator we find that multiplying these two terms we get 729 multiplying these two we get 1123.5 and so on then once we find f into m corresponding to each class then we have to add all these terms to get the total so the total in this case comes out to be 8559 now the same uh, as shown in the previous methods to find the mean of this series we just divide this total by the total of the frequency that is 22 in this case so the mean of this series comes out to be 8559 divided by 22 so is equal to 389.045 so in this way we can find the arithmetic mean of any question where classes are given there are some of the questions relating to the arithmetic mean that you can solve using the methods that we have learned in this video lecture the other methods of central tendency like median 
मोड जोमेट्रिक मीन एंड हारमोनिक मीन विल बी डिस्कस्ड इन द फर्दर वीडियोज इफ यू लाइक द कॉन्टेंट ऑफ दिस वीडियो और इफ यू फाइंड द कॉन्टेंट ऑफ दिस वीडियो यूजफुल प्लीज शेयर दिस वीडियो एंड डू सब्सक्राइब टू माई चैनल फॉर फ्यूचर अपडेट्स थैंक यू